Okay, we're on Sunday, the 31st of January, 2021. It's just coming up to 3.30 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. So uh, the e is going to open up in a couple of hours' time, and I'll be fascinated to see uh, what happens. I think the deep dive into this whole issue to do with Robin Hood, GameStop, Citadel, uh, counterparty risk, uh, brokerage capitalization uh, that we've had over the last two or three days. I think that discussion has been really interesting. I've I'd, I'd learned a lot. Um, and I think might have scared some participants in the market, might have an impact on how the E-mini opens up and trade into Monday. Um, I don't know. We're certainly weak at the moment. We've kind of been moving into these highs on the E-mini on um you know, kind of Rambo patterns and weak buying. And we've had some pretty choppy trade uh, during this last week. So I don't think it's all over on the downside, but I find it difficult to believe that, you know, this particular issue with Robin Hood and GameStop is big enough to be like a layman type uh, counterparty risk, lack of confidence kind of moment. But you know, things can escalate, uh, quickly get out of hand, and uh, markets can have positive, negative kind of feedback loops that, you know, quickly kind of generate large moves. So I'll be interested to see how the E-mini uh, kind of trades Sunday into Monday. But to be honest, I'm finding on my charts, the most interesting things going on are in the Forex charts, uh, with the dollar index potentially setting up for a, a grab and go uh, type of trade um, and a sell off in the uh, major Forex pairs. Uh, because we've had better pro-am signal over the last couple of weeks that something's about to change in those markets. So um, this is my little summary chart of what goes on in the Forex markets with just better pro-am and the professional and amateur uh, activity plotted. We've got the dollar index, Japanese yen, Swiss franc, uh, euro, British pound, Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, Mexican peso, and also Bitcoin ad put on Bitcoin here. It doesn't really fit in terms of being a Forex kind of contract, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, I kind of keep it on this chart here. And all I have on these charts is better pro-am showing uh, the professional and amateur activity. And the uh, we use the average trade size to determine uh, professional amateur activity. And you can actually see the professional activity and amateur activity because the average trade size bumps up by something like 15 to 20% or declines by 15 to 20% on the professional and amateur side. I often get asked, you know, is there a hard number that I'm using um, to determine that professional amateur activity? And the answer is no, it's a dynamic kind of calculation. So you can use better pro-am on any chart. It's better on um, tip bar charts. It's more accurate than on uh, daily charts, but still find it incredibly useful. So uh, this is the dollar index chart. And the reason why I pay attention to uh, the professional bars on these charts is because they do not uh, pop up very frequently. We're using the multiple time frame version of the indicator. Uh, we're using the new algorithm here on the settings. And it means that you see professional activity fairly infrequently. So this is, you know, back in 2018, those professionals down at the bottom of the dollar index buying this 85 kind of level down here. And we went for, you know, a two year, uh, bull market. And we had a little, this is called, I call a stair-step trade here, where you know we have uh, the amateurs getting too excited with Rambo patterns, so they're buying this breakout. That activity is being led by amateur buying, and uh, they kind of get wrong-footed, and we have a reaction, a uh, counter-trend kind of move against them, and that's where the professionals step in for a stair-step trade. And so they step in and hold the, the line there, and uh, the market kind of rallies forward. They step, step in again at this point, and even though you know the move subsequently was just being driven by the amateurs at that point there, we come back down, we break those lows, the amateurs are freaked out of their positions, stopped out of trades and so on. That level in general holds. Yes, we have, you know, better pro-am has a little bit of trouble kind of figuring out what's going on here, but we know that that level professional-wise is important and we continue to rally. And then into the you know beginning of 2020, uh, this is the massive sell-off that we have. We know the professional activity is selling that move, then they're buying here and then they're selling that rally at those highs. Um, so we just have to kind of 
uh, finesse it a little bit in terms of the uh, interpretation here. But as you can see, you know, we don't have many blue professional bar signals kind of popping up. And so when they do pop up, need to pay attention. The last one we had before this little sequence over the last you know, few days uh, was this one here. It was a stair step trade where we kind of come down, you know, there's some holding of the line here at 92, but then the professionals step in and we break below the lows of that blue professional bar, bang, uh, down here to uh, you know lows for this uh, trending move. And last two weeks, we've had a lot of activity here. So stair-step trades uh, tend to be short and sweet, where we have one, maybe two kind of blue professional bars kind of come in, we bounce off them immediately. So that's the look and the feel of a stair-step kind of trade. Uh, this, though, has the look of something more like a, uh, a multi-day kind of uh, move, where the professionals are taking advantage and, and changing positions instead of reloading on a trade and, and uh, supporting the move as it kind of uh, progresses. So this, for me, is interesting for a potential change in trend. And of course, all of the media at the moment, um, well, over the last month or so, has just been saying how you know the dollar index will continue to decline and blah, blah, blah. Whenever you see that kind of mentioned in you know the financial press, um, just take note just to ignore it. I, I ignore all financial press. Um, just don't don't bother reading uh, any of the the stories in, in any depth because uh, they're just they're just there to uh, you know cloud your judgment. So um, so this for me is is really interesting. So we got the dollar index potentially setting up here for a change in trend. So it means a break above this resistance level here, which is what is that number uh, ninety point eight eight. So you know above. Um, 91 would would be a clear signal that something's happened here that they've been changing their tune and that we're going for a, a change in in trend here on uh, dollar index so on the counter though you know if we start breaking through 90s uh, here and we start testing these lows then this was just a huge opportunity for them to reload on the trade kind of going short so um, you know definitely something happening here we've not had exhaustion signals on the way down on the dollar index in order to uh, show that this move is done on the downside. Yes, we've had some flush patterns and so on on that daily chart. And I might just show you that here. So here we go. This is the daily uh, chart of the dollar index. This is better pro-am with the combo indicator beneath it and so on. You can see better momentum here. Yep, been some nice sell-off kind of uh, signals here with flush patterns kind of going on. But we don't have a nice kind of clearing out trade. But that's fine. You know, what we could do is kind of uh, rally from here and then the professional step in again and the final move uh, down is then made with an exhaustion sell. So, you know, that's not definitely a, a change in trend signal, but it could be an intermediate kind of uh, reversal for a while until, you know, the next kind of move comes down. We're oversold in terms of better sine wave here. We've gone pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, the intermediate time frame. We've overshot a support on the highest time frame. That doesn't necessarily mean that pullback to end of trend is going to uh, play out completely because we've had these, sometimes these uh, secondary kind of uh, pullback to end of trends don't play out and we just break above the uh, resistance line there into an uptrend. So on you know better sine wave, whatever that resistance there, 9075 is the level here. We talked about this level here, which is 9088. So anything you know kind of above 9088, uh, looking at 91, uh, for a break would trigger this whole um, setup into an uptrend on both uh, better sine wave on the price uh, bars and then better pro am uh, using you know the professional activity and it would I think the uh, combo would reverse if those both of those go positive I know combo trend would would uh, reverse and, and show an uptrend so that for me is is an important uh, kind of setup if you look at it on the um, tip bar chart as well. So here's the sell-off that we've had into 89.50 down here, and there's the professionals kind of step in. So this is like a, ga uh, a grab and go type trade. So as we sell off here, then the professionals just grab everything and we immediately, they've grabbed it and the market goes uh, to the upside. And then when we've kind of come back down, this is a stair step trade. So a blue professional, but we have a little bit of weakness. Uh, there's nothing there to say the professionals have sold, you know, either of these little spikes up here you know, the market comes back down, they grab it uh, again for a stair-step trade, bang, we go up, uh, test the highs again, no blue professional bars kind of getting out here and so on. We have a little bit of weakness and they grab it again for another stair-step kind of trade. We need to keep going above there 
kind of break above th this level 90s to 91s and so on to give us you know real confidence that this thing is actually kind of uh, heading in that direction so I'm actually long dollar index I don't particularly like trading the dollar index because you know, it's a combination of the euro and the Japanese yen, and sometimes those can be moving in slightly different directions. And so the, the strong, strongest move will be in one or either of those contracts, either the Japanese yen or the euro, and the dollar index might not be the strongest, you know, um, instrument to be traded. But, yeah, in this particular instance, instance, I do like this setup. This is a 2,000 tip bar chart. I'm normally looking at this on a 1,000 tip bar chart in the dollar index. But the signals were a little bit, you know, kind of messy kind of going out on here. It's a lot clearer on the 2000 tip bar chart what is going on. So we've got a lot of good things kind of going on here. You can see on this sell-off move, pull back to end of trends on the lowest time frame, the intermediate time frame, you know, a whole cluster there of, loop of uh, end of trend signals with support in the highest time frame. We have a little bit of strength. We've broken into this temporary kind of little uh, weakness here with white bars we don't have you know combo trend signal together but as soon as we get above uh, this level 90 80 85 um, 91 kind of on on the high side uh, that'll trigger all of these and because that's happening on the tip bar chart and it's also likely to be happening on the daily chart we're potentially setting up for a really interesting multi-day, multi-week kind of move. So that for me is uh, is kind of the most interesting chart at the moment. So going back to this kind of view of better pro-am on all of these charts, you can see a similar type thing. So when when all of these you know pro-am lines start to come together, you know that something's happening. Either it's a re-entry stair step kind of trade, or it's a reversal kind of setting up. And you can see you know with the euro the last couple of days again, you know you don't see many of these blue professional bars on this chart when they happen pay attention here pay attention pay attention you know pay attention here uh, we've not had any blue professional bars well apart from this one at the uh, end of last year um, since you know the beginning of last year so uh, this is this is significant um, so euro chart Aussie dollar chart nicely you know come together here uh, couple, one blue professional bars at the highs, there are a little cluster going on here. So there's something going on with the Forex uh, markets. Uh, Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar uh, trade closely together. You, you can see again, we've tightened up with our trailing stop here. British pound, I know the British pound these days is so, so driven by news with Brexit and Europe and, and so on. I d don't, don't look at the British pound as closely as I do the euro. Japanese yen, very important and we've broken through this support level uh, here on Japanese yen so um, and we bounced off on the Mexican peso you know resistance line that's been in place for you know the whole year basically after the sell off, sell -off here you know we bounced back up to that level and it's just kind of come down uh, here so um, on the forex charts all of these for me are starting to come together but the euro and the Japanese yen are a little bit at odds at the moment. On the daily chart on Japanese yen, yeah, we've broken above support. Combo trend is about to flick into a downtrend at some point. So uh, that's important on the Japanese yen. When you look at it on the tick bar chart, it's very clear what's happened over the last few days. You know, we maxed out, pulled back to end of trends, and we started to break. Uh, having the blue professional bars here kind of taking profits. Um, and then we come and we retrace back into this area and uh, better, uh, the combo indicator kind of just shows us that we've got confluence here and the uh, yen kind of sells, sells off. So no exhaustion sells, no blue professional bars. Japanese yen is in a downtrend at the moment and that'll start uh, being picked up on the daily charts as that kind of rolls over. So the Japanese yen extremely weak at the moment. Euro though, uh, not yet. We've just had that one blue professional bar up here. Yes, we put in our pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, still showing a pullback, potentially end of trend on the uh, lowest time frame to go in here. It's happening around resistance, so it's not kind of flicked over yet. And then we, when we look at the tick bar charts, um, yeah, we've had a sell-off, but we've been caught at 21 with the professionals exhaustion sell the blue professional bars kind of step in here we're starting to put in pullback to end of trends 
uh, on the intermediate, the highest time frame that pullback supports in, we're showing support. So we just need to get above 21, and all of a sudden the euro will be in strength. So the euro and the Japanese yen are moving kind of counter to each other. They're the two biggest components of the dollar index. So I potentially shouldn't be in a dollar index trade. I should be shorting if I want to be sh uh, short uh, short the Japanese yen, long the euro instead of long the, long the dollar index. But the chart looks good on dollar index, so that's why I'm in it. Anyway, um, on the other uh, forex charts, we've got here's the Aussie dollar on the daily charts coming up to you know being driven by the amateurs. Blue professional bars step in. Uh, we've not flicked over on uh, the daily chart yet, but uh, we have flicked over on the tick bar chart here. So we've got weakness, a whole bunch of blue professional bars. You know, we traded back into that area of the blue professional bars on Friday's activity. We kind of came down. You kind of we're weak here. Canadian dollar, same thing. On the daily chart, we've not flicked around yet into a downtrend, but we've got blue professional bars here, this 77.6 level, absolutely key. But on the tip bar chart, yep, we're kind of weak. Um, and I don't, this is a bit bit uh, low time frame, the 4,000 uh, tip bar chart, Canadian dollar. I like to be using something like an 8,000, but it's not plotting for me uh, with the data on TradeStation, not, not nicely at least, but uh, it's weak. So... There's something important happening on the forex uh, charts, and um, if we get this right, this could run. Uh, this could be a multi-week, maybe multi-month uh, type pattern uh, that'll be really important. So the E-mini chart, uh, 10,000 tip bar chart, just to say, you know, we're in a downtrend at the moment. Um, we've had a whole bunch of flush patterns going on here. The last exhaustion sell patterns that we had uh, were a couple of days ago. We didn't get one with this activity uh, on Friday. You know, the sell-off here in a little kind of weak bounce. We came back to almost the lows of the day on Friday's close. Be looking for an exhaustion sell to end this move. So we're in a downtrend, but but who knows? They could force it back up and then uh, crash it back down. But we haven't seen an exhaustion sell, a nice one, uh, on these kind of lows at this point here. So uh, we're still in a downtrend until we get uh, that type of a signal kind of going off. So there we go, just some thoughts. Uh, Forex chart's going to be interesting for me over the next couple of days, see if we get confirmation of this uh, long dollar index trade.